Welcome. Um, my name is Derek Headley. I'm the coach of Crimson Robotics, and this is our safety presentation, um, largely inspired by Team 245. Thank you very much. We're just going to jump right into it. Safety is incredibly important to our team. We want to make sure that everybody has a safe environment to build robots in. Now, there's a lot of disturbing images out there on the internet in terms of what could happen if you are not doing things safely. This is probably one of the least disturbing images, oddly enough. Many of them include images of people losing appendages or getting very, very hurt through shop accidents. This is something obviously we want to avoid as a team. So I'm not going to insert a bunch of those disturbing images here, but just know we don't want you hurt. So one of the big things is proper attire. Always wearing safety glasses, always making sure that we don't have loose articles of clothing. Strings and hoodies is a great example. Hoodies are very popular. Our team hoodies, you need to remove the strings and the hoodies for having those in the shop at all. Closed toed shoes are required in the shop in general. Jewelry, hey, no ties, no bracelets, no rings, nothing else. We don't want there to be a chance that something gets caught in our machinery. Flying objects, there is a potential of flying objects in our shop. There are a number of machines that operate at very high speeds. If something gets caught in them and shot out of them, it'll fling them across the shop very quickly. Don't stand in back of things, like if somebody's using the chop saw, we do try and cover things, but when somebody yells clear, that individual should also be looking and making sure nobody is situated in an area where they might accidentally get hit by something as well. Okay, so be cognizant of what's going on in the shop, and if you're operating heavy machinery, be safe and make sure that nobody around you could get hurt either. All right, handing off tools. There's a proper way to hand off tools. Um, you should hand them off in reverse, if at all possible. In other words, if you're handing off a pair of scissors, you hand them to the recipient handle first so that they receive the handle of that item. Okay. You also grasp the other end, the sharp end, in a safe way so that you are grasping it such that you are pinching the blades flatwise, right? So that you're handing that off in a very safe way and handing them. The recipient then to signal that they have actually taken the tool from you or that they have a hold of it, should say thank you. And you should never yank a tool away from somebody. If somebody is, is handing you a sharp knife and you yank it away from them, there is potential for people to get hurt. Always close things like a utility knife or things like that if you can make sure that that device is as safe as possible before handing it off, that is a good thing. Now, check yourself. Um, when you are around the robot, if you don't need to be touching the robot, don't touch the robot. I see people hanging out every once in a while with just, you know, kind of just almost leaning on the robot, but maybe they have their hand on it or something like that. Don't be in contact with it unless you absolutely need to. That just reduces the chance that something should happen while we are working or around that robot. If you're turning on the robot, you should always be shouting clear or something to make sure that, hey, I'm going to be turning on the robot. Let everybody around you know that that is working on it so that they have their hands clear as well and they give a thumbs up before actually turning that robot on. All right, cooperation. Um, roughhousing is dangerous um, and creates distractions. Just avoid it. If at all possible in the shop, we should not be roughhousing, period. It is dangerous to be doing so. Work areas need to be kept clean, as clean as possible, okay? Metal shaving should only be cleared with a vacuum or brush. We have a new machine this year, a router that creates metal shavings or chips as we call them. Incredibly amount of uh, chips this machine creates. You do not want to just go over there with your bare hand and wipe across the table and try and clean something off with your hand. You will end up with a hundred slivers in your hand. So please use brushes or vacuums to clear things like that. Students should always consult a mentor if you need help, right? If you have a question on something, let us know. Another good, good pro safety tip here is if somebody's on a ladder, hold the base, all right? And never, never ride a robot. You should not be standing on a robot when it is in motion or around it in any way like that. All right, using power tools. Never operate equipment in the shop unless you are supervised by a mentor. You need a mentor in the shop at all times if you are using something that either plugs into electricity or has a battery. Don't talk to others while operating heavy machinery. 
So if you are actually operating it and not just watching it run, for example, our new CNC machine, there will be times when you consult with somebody while this CNC machine is running. That's fine. But we should always have somebody by the CNC machine that is prepared to turn it off should something go wrong. Keep hands out of the path of cutting surfaces. This is going to become even more important with our new CNC table router. It, it's easy to get your hand down in there or around there or um, want to vacuum while it is cutting and, and kind of clean things up as you go. Talk to a mentor about what we can do and you know if you really need to be doing anything like that. Generally speaking, we will not have our hands over that table while it is going. There are a couple exceptions to that, but we will get into that when we train you on the CNC router. Never attempt to measure or adjust while the machine is running. So for example, if you need to adjust where the drill press is coming down and drilling a hole in a piece that you have clamped to the drill press, you don't just let the drill press up, keep it running, and then adjust the clamp. You should be turning that off and then adjusting where it's clamped and then starting the drill press again and moving it down. We don't want your hands in there. We don't want you accidentally getting caught up in the drill press while you are adjusting the clamp. Create a safe work zone associated with the machine you're operating with. And this is just, again, making sure that people know that you are operating something and keeping people away if um, you're operating something that's dangerous. So a chop saw, whenever we are cutting anything, we should be yelling clear. Warn others around you all the time if you're about to operate a machine. It's just good practice. Know the tools and the rules, right? Use safe, safety guards whenever they are available. On the cutoff saw, drill press, it's not available on our hand drills or on our CNC, but when guards are available, please use them. Again, keep your hands out of the path of anything and secure your materials. Um, on our CNC machine, that will be incredibly important. We will secure everything before we start cutting. We should be doing that in our drill press. We should be doing that um, with our cutoff saw as well. Have the machine running at full speed before starting to cut and drill. I have heard students before start cutting with the, ch the chop saw and not really allowing it to get up to speed before I hear it cutting. That's bad on the machinery and it's unsafe as well. Make sure you also know how to turn off machines quickly should you need to. CNC machine has a big old red button. Something's going wrong, whack, you hit that thing and use that button liberally, okay? It is okay to hit that button. Okay, make sure you're always using tools in a very good working condition. Make sure you're using tools that are not broken. Don't try and patch something up and try and use it in some weird way. Always use the right tool for the right job. And something my dad always taught me, if you're working really hard and muscling something in or you're drilling something really hard and it's just not working, you're probably using the wrong tool. We have tools that make our jobs easier. There's a reason we don't have hand drills. We use right power drills all the time. And those power drills, if you're muscling something in, possibly the bit you're using is very dull. Most of our bits should cut through aluminum and wood without a problem if they are properly sharpened and in good working condition. Our CNC router, as I've talked about, this is brand new for us this year. We are really happy to have this. A few rules without, uh, around this. You shouldn't be using this without a mentor or a coach around. In fact, don't. You will get in trouble if um, you are using this without a mentor or coach uh, in the shop and without really consulting them first, right? You need to make sure that your paths are set up correctly, that everything is going to work in a manner that you are comfortable with and that the mentor is comfortable with as well. Review your work holding. How are you actually holding down your aluminum and your wood as you're cutting it? Make sure you have the appropriate bit in. Find the appropriate home, and we'll teach you how to do that, this work home for your work holding. This is typically known as a G54, G55, G56. In this particular case, G54 is always a temporary home on our Velox, so we will not be using G54 at all but you will more than likely be using G55 on a regular basis. Double check everything. Make sure that things are out of the way. This machine is a little bit complex. It's not as easy as just walking up and using uh, the drill press or the cutoff saw. This is something where you really have to be prepared with your paths, with your aluminum and so on to make sure that everything goes properly. Hit go when you're ready 
and use that emergency stop button liberally if something seems to be going wrong. Safety in the hallway. Now, not just in the shop, but we need to be safe everywhere. You need to wear your safety glasses if you're running an FRC robot. So if you're running the FRC robot out in the hallway, wear your glasses. No walking past the robot while it's operating. You should make sure that whoever's running the robot stops the robot first, and then you can pass. If we're out in the hallway or somewhere with the robot, there should be boundaries that are set and you should not go past those boundaries. Oftentimes there's backpacks in the hallway. We need to move those backpacks to a designated area and your coach or mentor will let you know what that area is. If you leave your backpack in the hallway and you go to another area to work on something, don't be surprised if your backpack's moved when you get back. Batteries, when carrying batteries, boy, never, never, never pick them up by the wires. Always hold them firmly from the bottom our electrical lead will come and hunt you down if you're doing that. So please, please, please make sure you are, are carrying them properly. If a battery breaks, neutralize it. Three parts baking soda, one part water is the way you typically do this. Talk to a mentor immediately if a battery breaks, okay? We need to get on top of it right away and make sure that spills are taken care of. Injuries, if somebody is injured, let a coach or mentor know right away. Even the smallest injury should be evaluated. You get a small cut, you think it's no big deal, but you don't treat it, um, it could get infected and pretty soon you could end up in a uh, very bad situation. So make sure you're taking care of things. Let a coach or mentor know and make sure that you're taking care of even small injuries quickly. A little um, dab of Neosporin on a Band-Aid, wrap it around your finger, and you're off and running again. It only takes a few minutes. And before you put that Neosporin on, I should say, wash and clean it thoroughly. Go over, wash your hands off. We always have soap available at the sink. Wash it off nice and thoroughly. Dry it, clean it, put a bandage on it, put a little Neosporin on it, and you should be good and off and going. It takes less than a couple minutes to do, and it makes sure that you're safe, and it proves to others that, hey, you care about yourself, and you care about others enough to take care of yourself. Know where the first aid kit is, is as well. If it gets loud in the shop, wear earplugs. When the CNC router is running, I encourage you to wear earplugs. I encourage you to wear earplugs when you're cutting with a chop-off saw. By yelling clear, a lot of times you'll notice people all of a sudden plug their ears. That's because the chop saw is very noisy when cutting aluminum. There are reasons for that and there are ways that we can cut that down with wax and so on. But even with that on it, sometimes it screeches and gets a little bit loud. Wear earplugs. My hearing is not perfect, and I recognize that as well, and I want to make sure that I maintain my hearing as much as possible, so wear earplugs. Where's the first aid kit? Hey, everybody should know where the first aid kit is before you start working in the shop. It is critical that you demonstrate this. It is in our gray chest in the top of the middle of drawers. So if you go to the lower section, it is in the top of that lower section. It's kind of a thicker drawer, and there are several first aid kits in there. If somebody gets hurt, obviously that's a great place to go to get something. All right, don't touch motors or objects not associated with robotics. And this is true in our shop because we share our shop with a small engines class at the high school. Don't touch just random things in the shop. If you don't know how to use something, don't touch it. Don't be getting into things that really aren't used for robotics that are in the shop and aren't ours. Other thing, no eating in the shop, all right? We shouldn't have food in there at all. Uh, it, it, it's way too easy to have something contaminated and all of a sudden, a, I don't know, a metal chip fly into it and you, you know, pretty soon you're eating a metal chip and it does terrible things to your digestive system. Just don't, don't even put yourself in you know, a, a position where something like that might happen. So just no eating in the shop, no drinking in the shop. You shouldn't have water bottles or anything else in the shop like that. 